Hi, I'm Mary. There is more and more people interested in uh, attending uh, Korean language classes in Korea or doing a working holiday in Korea these days. Uh, I've been asked a lot of questions, so I figured I might just do a video. It would be easier to collect my thoughts because I have a lot of things to say, to be honest. So don't hesitate to just skip to the parts that interest you the most. A little bit of a background story. I did a working holiday for one year in 2018. Uh, during that time, for some reasons, I ended up following the Korean language program of Dunggu University, the second level. I, after my working holiday, uh, I went back to Korea with a student visa, so the D4 visa to attend more Korean classes and I did a level 3 and level 4 in Iwa Women's University. I have many friends who did the Sogang pro program, so I will also be comparing them because I have seen their books and we have discussed the differences together. And I can tell you that there is no much a difference between all the schools. That's uh, my opinion. I think that they're all pretty much the same. Although um, Sogang is pretty famous for being more focused on conversational Korean. So first of all, how different are the Korean language schools curriculum compared to what you might learn in your home country? So in, in every uh, language school, you have six levels of Korean language class and all of those levels are um, three months or so ten weeks of intensive class. So the question I often hear is, is the language school worth it? Because it's pretty expensive, it's a lot of money investment and time investment, so is it worth it? Will you be able to reach a, a good level of Korean at the end of it? And is it worth your time, effort and money? basically. And the answer, the short answer is it depends on you. Uh, it depends on what you're doing with that time and what you expect from it. My first unpopular opinion is that the Korean class is not gonna make you fluent in Korean. It's not a way to learn conversational Korean. It can help a lot, especially if you're a total beginner and you do the first and second level. I can tell you that you are gonna reach intermediate level uh, pretty fast and you will need this, it's a solid basis uh, to build your skill, to understand the, the, the basis of the language, of the grammar, of how to make sentences and stuff and the important vocabulary for everyday life so I 100% recommend to at least do level 1 and 2 if you're a beginner going to Korea now if you want to reach a more advanced level uh, I don't think the Korean class is meant to make you fluent in Korean. I think it's meant to make you able to study in Korean. This is so different. It's a curriculum that aims to make the students able to enroll in a Korean university to follow a Korean university courses. And for that, I think it's pretty well made if you're focusing on it and not doing only that and studying and doing your homework and essay and everything i think indeed in two years two years is it six levels it's around two years um, definitely at the end i believe that you might be able to study in korean but as far as conversation goes i think it has its limits the first thing is that you are talking in Korean with other foreigners learning the language. My experience is that you're not making a lot of progress speaking broken Korean with other people speaking broken Korean. And it might be better for your self-confidence because it's very hard to talk in a language you're not comfortable in to a um, native speaker especially if you're more shy, if you are afraid to make mistakes, if you're afraid to be judged, if you need to speak in more formal situations like university or work uh, and it might not be like a safe place to make mistakes, then it's easier to speak with other Korean learners. 
but it's I don't think it's very helpful. So I personally hated the Malhagi part. I thought it was a bit of a waste of time because also the way the Malhagi part, so Malhagi the conversation part of uh, of the studies, the way it is made is not conversation. It's repeating like a theater play a text and changing some sentences, adding different uh, vocabulary, but it's only about that specific thing you studied. It's not gonna make you able to improvise easily in uh, everyday life. It's like if you're learning to dance and you are learning chore choreographies, but then when someone just blasts a random music, you're unable to freestyle dance. That's how, I, how it feels. It's, I think it's the closest you can get with a metaphor. It's, it's how it felt. And that's why I want to say that the claim that Sogang is great for conversations, I have my thoughts about that. Um, so just to, to, to be clear, I didn't attend Sogang. Take it with a grain of salt, but I uh, have friends who did and I discussed with them and I know how it's done. My point there is that to me, choosing Sogang for the conversation tables and to be able to speak a better conversational Korean, to me it's the same as looking for the best tablet to play Cyberpunk 2077. Yeah, maybe you will find a tablet that can run the game, but it will never be as good as playing it on desktop, right? And I think that the strength of the Korean Language Institute, the Korean Language Program, I think the strength is really about understanding text and writing essays and I would prefer to just uh, invest in that where I know I can be brilliant rather than investing in something that anyway is not meant to be done that way and if you want to learn conversational Korean you need to have conversations with Korean people not attend the class university and pay $1,500 per trimester Still, I agree that the Korean language school is what you make of it. In the end, if you attend, if you focus on learning the language and on your free time, you actually have a social life, you have a job or something else that allows you to directly apply what you learned. It's the best way, honestly. In the morning, you're studying and then in the afternoon, you will be practicing what you're learning. That's the best and that's why immersion is so important and that's why it's great to be in Korea learning the Korean language, right? Now the problem is starting from level 3 and especially level 4 that I attended, it's just not possible to do something else. It's so much work. You have homeworks every single day, well that's since the, the level 1, but um, you also have to write essays often. You have uh, tons of vocabularies. I reached a point where I had to learn like 15, 20 words a day. You are, if you want to make sure that you're not just studying for the exam and you're actually really studying to absorb uh, the language, then you will need to focus it. It's just it's gonna be a full-time job. It's not just the four hours a day. It's just your whole day needs to be about it. And if you're gonna work on top of that, you're gonna be exhausted. I don't really recommend it. Which is also difficult because the first six months uh, of you arriving in Korea, you're not allowed, with a D4 visa, you're not allowed to work at the same time. But I would say that the first six months is the moment where you have the most free time because when you reach the higher levels, then you really should focus 100% on that if you want to catch up. Okay, now about the course itself and if I liked it or not, there is a lot of pros and cons that I want to talk about. I see a lot of videos that just talking about what it is like and what is the life on campus and do you like living in Korea and stuff and that's very interesting because it makes most of the experience. But I don't see many people really talking about the curriculum itself, like how good it is, did they adjust well, did they think it was well made. I also want to point out that most of the universities, they give a discount on the scholarship uh, if you promote the program on social medias and YouTube, so be careful also. About the curriculum itself, I believe that it's the same in every institute. But if it's not, please tell me in the comments if it was different in your language school. But 
um, from what I've seen, is always the same thing. You have a book that is um, divided in a different chapters, and every chapter has a grammar points with exercises, the new grammar of the chapter. Then you're gonna have a listening um, conversation uh, with questions that you need to answer based on what you heard. You're gonna have a text, sometimes about the culture or about something uh, yeah, related to the topic of that chapter. And uh, similarly, you will need to answer questions to prove that you understood, understood the text well. You're gonna have more grammar and then you're gonna have the marhagi. The structure of the classes will change when you reach higher levels because basically by level 4 you have studied every single grammar point or almost. So if by level 4 you remember all the vocabulary since level 1 and uh, you understand and can use a grammar then I can tell you you are advanced level and you have all the um, knowledge you need to speak Korean, the only thing you will need is practice. My point of view is if you need one conversational Korean, then you can stop at level 4 and then you, everything will be up to you. But if you want to enroll in a Korean university, if you want to be able to write uh, fluently, if you want to be able to read books in Korean and stuff, then I recommend to really continue to level 6. The good thing about that template, let's say, of dividing chapters and dividing classes is that you know exactly what to, what to expect, you know exactly how it's going to be done and for at least the three first levels it's going to be always exactly the same thing and if you miss one day of class you can actually know exactly until when the teacher will be studying that same day and you can study by yourself then. But that also means that personally that was the biggest, that was really the biggest shock I had following those classes is how untailored it was to the audience. The feeling was that the students and even the teacher are be having to fit a curriculum and not the curriculum having to fit the classroom, if that makes sense. Um, it's like, it's so interchangeable. You can have any teacher, any teacher, and I'm saying that all the teachers are great, I just want to make that clear, I had a really uh, great experience with all of my teachers being in Dongguk or in uh, Ihua, I think they're amazing and they explain well and they're very patient, but they are so scripted and you can just change one teacher by another and the class is gonna go exactly the same way. Now I want to make a big disclaimer here that I am talking from my point of view which is from European culture and even French speaking culture. When I studied Korean in Belgium, I had uh, teachers asking us what we want to learn and asking us if everything was alright, if there was one part we need to focus more on we will focus more on that part. If there is some grammar that is unclear, we're gonna go over that grammar until it's clear. But in the Korean Language Institute, it's not like that. It's just, you follow, that's all. If it's not clear, then you need to make sure it's clear in the afternoon when you study by, your, by yourself. Because the next day, we move on. It's the next point, next grammar point, and that's it. Also, the class feels kind of like a race because there is a clear goal. Like at the end of the semester, you should reach that goal. That's just how it is. There's no other way that you are always, always just absorbing. And as I said, sometimes, well, most people don't really have any way to use it in real life directly after learning it. Uh, although you're living in Korea, but I don't know many uh, students actually from the language school who had Korean friends who had a social life in Korea, um, who had a job or had any way to really use it apart from school. So how it feels again, if I, if I may use another metaphor, is like a restrictive diet. It's like you are making a lot of effort during a short amount of time and during that time you might see results of your efforts. With that way of studying, the moment you stop that insane rhythm, it's like you forget everything. It's not gonna be stuck because it's, uh, well, 
not using the how you call long-term memory is like kind of stacking stuff on your short-term memory for me it's like my RAM was full but I didn't feel like I was really writing on my hard drive with big sense and yeah so when you just after a few days then the RAM is the all the temporary files are gone and you just you can see what really stuck on your hard drive and I don't think that was for me, I don't think that was as much as I expected. Well, it's just how it is in language learning, right? It's not like, it's not something that you study once and it's gonna stay in your brain. You need to use it, right? But um, how many people can really, after studying the current language in Korea, how many people can really stay in Korea, find a job there, have plans? I think most people will go back to their home country and try to use it somehow. Well. I can tell you that most of the things you learn you will forget if you don't make a big effort in keeping it if you don't yeah if you don't use it on a daily basis and that's another question like is it worth it then you had a great experience you had a great time in korea but in the end if you cannot use it after is it worth it now about the mood about how fun it is to attend the Korean language school. I'm not gonna talk too much on that because one big factor is your personality and I know that I am not a highly sociable person. I didn't make much effort. I'm not gonna blame the school for my lack of uh, social interactions with my classmates and stuff and I know that a lot of people made a lot of friends and had a blast. I didn't, to be honest, but again, like it doesn't mean that I didn't have a good time. Just the first thing that was hard for me is uh, that, well, uh, 90%, 95% of the students are either Chinese or Vietnamese. And in the UI, I found also a lot of Japanese people. Yeah, those three nationalities make like 90, 95, at least 95% of the students. Um, and it's not that I cannot make friends <laughs> with other nationalities, it's just that because there is a classroom full of uh, Chinese people or Vietnamese people, they're gonna talk in Chinese or Vietnamese with each other, right? And they're gonna have that bond, which is natural, they're gonna bond more easily together and you're gonna feel like an outcast. And also, there was a lot of um, young people, and that's also I want to talk. About, I want to talk about the demographics for a moment. It's related to the fact that this this program is meant to make you prepare for studies in Korean in a Korean university. So you will have a lot of very young kids who are like 18, 19, 20, whose purpose is to study in Korea. And I felt a big age gap. And I felt like, I guess I expected a mood where it's, uh, it's teaching adults, like I had in Belgium, but I felt more like a mood of teaching kids. And that's another point that made me have a bit of a hard time, is all the infantilization. And I guess, again, that's something very cultural, because here I think there's not many people who would accept to be treated like a child in an adult class. I felt like I was in middle school and that was not easy to be honest. I think I am allergic to that. There were some things that I was uncomfortable with as well, like very traditional way of picturing uh, moments of life. Like ex example sentences would be the woman be doing some shopping or being at home cleaning, but the man would be drinking with his friends outside and having fun or exercising and the sort of things. Like it's a lot of uh, gender roles in example sentences in for the everyday life uh, situations that I found icky or stuff like when we learned. Uh, the grammar point tapta, yoja tapta. We had to say what is yoja tapta. We were asked to say like yoja tapta, so being like a woman is wearing a skirt, is having long hair. And I was sitting there being like, 
I am not gonna participate in that conversation. Like it's, but then you you sound like you're just being the annoying one. But I don't know. Just there were so many things where I felt I just felt infantilized with those sort of conversations. Now the biggest pro of that curriculum is that is very well structured. So that's also the con I was talking about. That it's always the same thing, and that it's like a one size fits all. But that's also great that you know exactly how to study it. So that means that also something you can do is to attend the school for one or two semesters, and then just buy the books and just study by yourself because you know how it works. I really recommend to at least do one hakki, uh, so one the trimester, and after some time you just uh, get the formula. You just know how to study then, and you can try to study by yourself. But, and that's also another big pro of that labor school, a lot of people are unable to uh, have so much discipline by themselves. And I am one of them. It's really hard for me when you have, when you're an adult and you have so many other things in your to-do list, when you have a lot of other responsibilities, when you have a lot of other priorities, it's really hard to sit down and focus on something. And especially when you don't know what to what to follow, what to study, but the current class give you a structure, so you just have to follow. They made the curriculum like split in six parts. You don't have to ask like, what should I learn first? Is it really useful or not? Is I think this part is really really well designed, and uh, if you can just for by yourself sit down on a table and follow that uh, that lesson like two hours a day then you will make tremendous progress and there will be all fine and you don't need to follow that language institute. Now, the thing is, I'm not gonna lie, the student visa is one of the only things you have to be able to go to Korea. That's, that's just the number one reason why people attend uh, Korean language school, let's be honest. So you can, I think many people see it as just paying for your visa, I guess. And in the end, it's up to you to make the most out of it, right? So in the end, if I was to do it all over again, to be honest, um, what I would recommend to someone who's planning to uh, have a working holiday in Korea, for instance, who want to live in Korea for a moment, who want to get better at Korean language and want to experience life in Korea, before applying for a working holiday, I would recommend to apply for the student visa and study for at least two semesters in Korea and then apply, well you need to go back to your country if it's possible but then I would recommend to apply for the working holiday visa because first of all working holiday visa is only one year and I can tell you that after one year in Korea you don't want to leave and as much as you prepared for Korean life, as much as you studied in your home country the Korean language um, I just feel like the Korean language school is very useful to make your first steps in Korea. It's really helping with uh, integrating students to explain many things about life in Korea, which I found boring because I already knew, right? But for people who just arrive, it's a lot of help. So I think it's great also for the language, like we tend to overestimate our language ability and it's always great to finish at least level two um, before you start finding a job or something. So I would just recommend to attend one or two semesters, uh, get the most out of it, focus on it, uh, study a lot, practice a lot, and then switch to the working holiday to live your best life in Korea, travel and try to work if you can or not, attend more Korean class if you want or not. Uh, so yeah, in the end, is it worth it? Depends on your expectations. Thank you for watching and see you next time. Bye bye.